Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and continuing the topic of periodic and aperiodic signals in which we go into the in detail of the fundamental time period. Today we prove a formula uh, to calculate the time period. Right? So the fundamental time period, you know, we, we represented it with a capital T and the subscript naught. So T naught, right? Now this is for a periodic signal, definitely. So we should know the criteria for a periodic signal. So for periodic signal, what is the criteria? That x of t is equal to x of t plus minus n times t naught, where n is an integer, t naught is the fundamental time period of it. For simplicity over here, say that n is equal to 1 and this t naught is equal to positive. So we have a simplified equation that x of t is equal to x of t plus t naught. This is the criteria, let's say, for a signal to be periodic. Now, uh, I would apologize if, if the speed is a little higher in this video because I already have recorded this video once. But I'm not liking the video quality of these cameras I'm changing again and again. So I need your suggestion. Uh, whether the uh, initial that digital logic design and electronic devices and circuits videos that you are seeing that camera is good or the signal and system video the first uh, five seven that I recorded and the next also I would be recording with those or is this camera good that I'm recording uh, this lecture with and the next one. So you give me your suggestion okay on this one. Coming back to the topic. So, let's say considering a signal that x of t is equal to a naught times exponential of j omega naught t. j omega t. <clears throat> so, this is a signal. This is the complex exponential signal which we will see in a great detail. For now, we are just taking an example to prove this formula. Fine. So, let's say, let's say this signal is periodic, fine. So, if this is periodic, then x of t plus t naught, so it would be what? It would be a naught exponential of j omega t plus t naught, won't it be? It would be, right? And wait, let I this, I do this omega naught, okay? Let this be the fundamental angular frequency. Now, if, if this signal is periodic, so x of t plus t naught would equal x of t, so which means that I could write that a naught exponential of j omega naught t is equal to a naught exponential of j omega naught t plus t naught. Fine. So which means a naught a naught divides out the remaining is exponential j omega naught t exponential j omega naught t into exponential j omega naught t naught cancels out is that finished so the remaining is exponential j omega naught t naught and this is equal to 1 isn't it so it is right so now this is only possible, only possible if this condition, this could only be equal to 1 if over here omega naught t naught is equal to 2 pi. <coughs> Sorry, is that fine? Now how is this? So this is from the Euler's theorem, from Euler's theorem. Now we know Euler's theorem that exponential of j of x could be written as cos of x plus j sine of x, right? If x is considered to be 2 pi. So we have exponential of j 2 pi or let's say 2k pi, multiples of 2 pi, right? So 2k pi, so this would equal cos of 2k pi plus j sine of 2k pi. Now we know the multiples of 2k pi for cos would give us 1 and similarly the multiples of 2 pi uh, for sine would give us 0. So this implies what? That 
exponential of j 2 k pi is equal to 1. <clears throat> now for fundamental, for fundamental that is for the very first period if we say that the value of k is equal to 1 so we have what? We have exponential of j 2 pi equal to 1 and here we have exponential of j 2 pi equal to 1. Is that okay? So let this be a, let this be b. Now this is one, this is one, so I could equate both of them. So let's say I say that exponential of j omega naught t naught equals exponential of j 2 pi. Now I can say, compare the exponential, I have omega naught t naught equals 2 pi and from here I conclude that t naught is equal to 2 pi upon omega naught. So this is the formula for the fundamental time period which is t naught is equal to 2 pi upon omega naught. Now this is for the fundamental period. If you want to find the next period, so we would multiply k with it. So that would be what? In that case it would be t naught is you know this if I write it generally. So generally it would be 2 pi k upon omega naught. Why? Because over here, over here have a look. We neglected the k equal to 1. So over here we would also have a k. So this would be omega naught t naught equal to 2 pi k. So t naught would be equal to 2 pi k upon omega naught. Is that fine? So similarly you would have the fundamental frequency which is 1 upon t naught. So this would be omega naught upon 2 pi. And I hope that's all about it, okay? It is. So now what do you do is, uh, we come to an example, okay, sine squared 4 pi t, let's say, let's say I remove this. So we have an example to deal with, let's say the first is that x of t is equal to sine squared 4 pi t. Now we don't have any formula for sine squared of t, so we would, you know, uh, we would write it in, in any other terms. And what are those terms? So I have it over here. Cos of 2 theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So we have cos of 2 theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. I believe this formula is right. I am not missing a 2 over here. I believe we have a 2 over here or whatever it is. You can do it yourself. The basic idea is the concept. So from here I could write that uh, sine squared of theta would be 1 minus cos of 2 theta. So I have a look over here, we have theta is equal to 4 pi t, theta is equal to 4 pi t. So what do you have is that x of t would be equal to 1 minus cos of 2 multiplied 4 pi t. So which means that x of t is equal to 1 minus cos of 8 pi t. Now for a DC value, you know that period is undefined and 1 is a DC value. So this is a DC value. So, which means you have t naught undefined. So, and so only this remains. So, for this have a look. Omega naught is equal to 8 pi, which means that the time period is equal to 2 pi upon omega naught is equal to 8 pi. So, this implies that the time period is equal to 1 over 4. And as the other component's time period is undefined, so we only have this time period for x of t. This is the overall time period of this function which is 1 over 4 second and from here I can write f naught is equal to 4 hertz as well. Is that fine? So let's say we have another example. Let's say I have uh, another example for which I remove this. The formula let's say I, 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 I let it be and let the main criteria also be over here. So let's say the question is that sine of 6 pi t. The second question is x of t is equal to sine of 6 pi t plus cos of 5 pi t. All right. Now this is a case where you have the sum. You have the function as the sum of two components. So what do you do is you take them one by one. Alright, so let's say I take the component. So the first component x1 of t is sine of 6 pi t and the second component x2 of t is 
cos of 5 pi t right you have taken them individually now you do what you take their time periods individually so so for this omega 1 would be 6 pi for this omega 2 would be 5 pi so which means over here time 1 would be 2 pi upon 6 pi which is equal to 1 over 3 and for this t2 2 pi upon 5 pi so which means pi pi would cancel out and it would be 2 upon 5 is t2 isn't it so so let me remove all of the board because in this i have some points to cover all right now what do you do is you have found them out initially uh, individually so what do you do you take the ratio of these two you take the ratio of these two and for this i will use the black color so you use you take the ratio t1 upon t2 depending on this ratio we would classify this signal overall signal to be uh, periodic or aperiodic so we could have the ratio either to be a rational number or an irrational number fine now if this ratio t1 upon t2 it is a rational number this implies that the function is a periodic one and similarly if this is an irrational number so this implies that this signal is aperiodic now this thing rational and irrational i <laughs> i don't know the basics of it from the very beginning when i was in school i have absolutely no idea <laughs> of rational and irrational over here I could you know just summarize it in a few points for you guys hopefully you would know it way better than I know it okay this rational or irrational so over here the basic concept is not of rational and irrational where over here it is in this particular question but you should know it you should know it okay well I don't know it to that extent till where I should I'm sorry for that so rational uh, would be any uh, number in rational number it is a long number you know it's uh, recurring and non-recurring and repeating i don't know these things but a rational number in in a rational number we have a specific pattern repeating we have a specific pattern repeating and i believe it's never ending specific pattern repeating all right and aperiodic uh, uh, irrational is a number where you don't have any specific pattern repeating no repetition and what do you have it and, and the numbers if you have a number like pi under the root etc so these are also irrational numbers and 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 the ratio involving these terms would be <coughs> sorry would be what would be irrational and they would be aperiodic so coming back to our question is so so over here i am t1 upon t2 so this would be 1 upon 3 divided by 2 by 5 so multiplied by 5 by 2 so this is equal to uh, 5 by 6 5 by 6 now this 5 by 6 is rational this is in a p by q form right this is a rational number so which means that this function x of t overall is periodic this x of t overall is periodic but now how to find out the overall time period of the overall function x of t t1 is the period of first component t2 is for the second component how to find it overall the sum of the two so what do you do is i'd show you a shortcut method well this is not a shortcut but an easy method it is you simply do what first i remove this you equate <coughs> the fundamental time period t naught to what to this equation to the ratio equation the ratio equation is what t1 upon t2 which is equal to 5 upon 6 right so you equate it to the fundamental time period of the of the function so which i have done over here so what do you have is so t naught would be what so it so which means you cross multiply this thing so you cross multiply it to get a 6 times t1 or you get a 5 times t2 
So this basically is representing your fundamental time period of the overall function x of t in this case. So 6 times t1 would be what? It would be 2. And similarly 5 times t2 would be what? It would be again 2. So you have is that t0 for the overall function is 2 seconds. And similarly you can have the frequency is 1 over 2 which is equal to 0.5 hertz as well. So that's all about it. I am feeling a little tired. <coughs> Sorry. If I revise it for you guys is that if you have a function in components form, uh, over here we have it in some form. So what do you do? You take first component, you consider the second component. You find their time periods individually. You take their ratios. You take their ratios in any order. The order doesn't matter, okay? You take the ratios. If the ratio turns out to be a rational number, this function is periodic. If it turns out to be irrational, it's aperiodic. Fine. Now, rational is something that would in, in a number something would repeat, a specific pattern would repeat again and again. In irrational, we don't have any repetition in numbers like pi and, and under the root. If they, they are involved, this is irrational and you have it directly aperiodic. Now, over here, if the ratio is rational, so we have a periodic function. Now, this is this is understood that the function is rational. The function is periodic, but how to find out the period of the overall function? So for that, you do what you equate the 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 ratio of that we did. The ratio you equate the ratio to the fundamental time period. So which means you have to do what in this case now? You have to take the cross multiplication. So six times t1 would equal five times t2, and you equate it to t0. So this would six times t1 would be equal to five times to t0, and that would be equal to the fundamental time period. That's all about it. That's all about this lecture. That's all for today. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And do subscribe to the YouTube channel. And do remember me in your prayers. And thanks to my sister for helping me behind the camera. Till then, take care. Goodbye.